Apparently I'm releasing three YouTube videos today, which was not my plan and I have no idea how the algorithm may punish me, but apparently AMD just released a new graphics card today. Like it's on sale, you can buy it on Amazon. I'll put a link in the description if you do want one, but do you want one? <laughs> That's the big question because this is both extremely underwhelming in terms of its like absolute actual performance, um, and maybe it's pricing, but, but it has a reason why very specific builds might care. So this is the RX 6400. This is worse than a 6500 XT, and it has many of the same problems. If we pull up the specs page <laughs> from AMD's site, it has some of the issues with uh, like lacking in encoder, I know it's listed here somewhere, but yeah, this, uh, so it lacks the encoding. It has decoding, right, uh, on, on some, but, but not encoding. So some of the main complaints that we had with the 6500 XT, it also has the same issue with, uh, I forget exactly where they list it, but it only has the four PCIe 4.0 uh, lanes on its connection which is, again, the same kind of issue we saw with the 6500 XT. Also, its price is $159. That's $40 less than the 6500 XT. But, you know, it, it's still $160, and, you know, what sort of performance are you actually getting? Well, first let me get to the reason why anybody might even care slightly. This only draws 53 watts, or at least that's its typical board power. But the point is, it doesn't require an external power connector. That's the big thing. There's only a few options in the GPU space that don't require an external power connector, which means that it could work in some extreme small form factor builds, unlike another a GPU that does require that, or it could be a slot in into like a pre-built system that you're just trying to retrofit on a budget to actually play some games. Although you do want to be careful with that because not every uh, pre-built will actually be able to deliver the full 75 watt spec through its PCIe lane. So you do, like I said, you want to be careful with that and not just assume that every PCIe lane uh, can actually uh, deliver that much power. But anyway, now here's the other thing. Apparently, no big US outlets that I'm aware of, or not even just US, but even English speaking outlets seem to have been given a review sample to have a day one review ready. But I was able to find some reviews in, in, in Chinese, okay? <laughs> um, but we do get some gaming benchmarks here. And luckily this one is, ah, I forgot my little, ah, uh, is actually comparing pretty much exactly what I would want to see compared, but with one possible issue. First of all, I want to see how this compares against a 5700G, because if you're going with some of these real small form factor builds where you wouldn't want a power supply with, you know, ex ex needing external power connector for your GPU, all of that, one option is just to go with integrated graphics. And it is looking like it's performing significantly better in games than a 5700G which isn't saying much, but it is saying something. It's enough better to actually be worth buying over integrated graphics. The other reason why I'm interested, uh, uh, the other thing I'm mainly interested in is how does it compare against a 1650? Because 1650s are available without an external power connector. So that's kind of what you're up against in this segment for this particular build case. And then they also have it up against a 6500 XT, which is, you know, uh, interesting just to see how it compares against that. However, let me pull up some other info from this article. I looked at their testing platform and it looks like they are actually using the 5700G system, if I'm reading this Google translation of their article correctly, as their test bed, even when they're using the 6400. And here's why I think that's a big problem with some of these results. If we pull up the 5700G, the 5700G is only a PCIe 3.0 platform, which means that when you only have those four lanes, we're running into that issue of having four PCIe 4.0 lanes, which works fine if you have PCIe 4.0. Now, this is fair because you might slot this into a PCIe 3.0 system, but it would be better to see both results to, rather than just seeing just these results, but this is all that I could find available right now. Because I think 
If I had to guess why these results are all over the place when you compare it against the 1650, I have a feeling that's where you're running over the VRAM buffer and being on the PCIe 3.0 system is causing an issue. I think, that's what I think is happening here. Anyway, they benchmarked a number of games. Now, uh, the names of the games are in Chinese. If I hover over this, Google Translate attempts to translate it. Like this is uh, War Thunder apparently, but of course their, their translation is not always accurate. Well, this one is Final Fantasy XIV. Now these are 1080p results. And um, let's see, did they say exactly which graphics setting that they used? Set to the highest picture quality in the preset without ray tracing or FSR. Okay, so 1080p, highest picture quality preset, assuming that you know the Google Translate here is okay, <laughs> all right? Anyway, it looks like it's mostly tying or slightly beating the 1650 in a lot of situations other than when we run up against uh, some complete outliers. For example, uh, where is it here? Like in this one, uh, which does translate okay, looks like Assassin's Creed Origins, Assassin's Creed's Origins. It looks like the 6400 is falling beh behind that 1650, and the 1650 is catching up to the 6500 XT, which is another reason why I think this is an example of the PCIe 3.0 bottleneck on that times four connection. So I think that's what's going on here. But overall, um, I think when it's not limited by that connection and probably running over the VRAM buffer, so you could probably lower some settings, lower the texture settings or something to get that under control, it does look to be on par with and maybe slightly better than the 1650, although again, also lacking the encoders. So it has some major, major drawbacks. Anyway, so game-wise, like what do we have here? This is World of Tanks. And I mean, a lot of these games are delivering decent frame rates considering we're, we're playing at 1080p here. So it's not like this is unusable for gaming at all or anything like that. This is Far Cry 5 if I ho hover over it. Assassin's Creed Origins. Uh, if we hover over this one, this is Gears of War 5. Uh, hovering over this one, it says Dust 5. I'm not sure what Dust 5 is. Maybe that's a mistranslation. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, Far Cry 6. Again, another one where it's falling falling a bit behind. I think, again, I think we hit those uh, PCIe connection issues. Subway, guys, Subway leaving. I have to bet that's Metro Exodus, okay? <laughs> Subway leaving. Alternate title. Um, and then down here we have Watch Dogs Legion. Okay, so there's, there are the results. Now, it certainly looks like there are games where it's, it's getting less than 30 FPS here. But again, if we believe them that they're actually using the high settings at 1080p, you could certainly tweak the settings down. So, and, and it looks like we are absolutely doing better than integrated graphics, although I would love to see it you know, more significantly outperform a 1650. Now, okay, so where does that put it in relation to other GPUs? Now, if we basically call it a tie with the 1650, we could now pull up a relative performance chart and compare it with some other GPUs. So that, so that kind of puts it a little bit behind a GTX 970. So we're not talking astronomical performance here, guys. It, you can play some games. It is better than a 1050 Ti, it looks like, right? So, you know, it might beat some older cards. It is better than a GTX 1050, uh, but then it's significantly worse than something like a GTX 1060, right? And then obviously more modern graphics cards, even a 1650 Super is gonna be significantly more powerful. So this gives us a rough idea where it would fall, you know, compared to, to uh, other cards. Now, it's $159, and at least right now when I checked, it is actually in stock on Amazon for that, that MSRP price. Um, now, that's interesting because if I do search PC Part Picker for its main competitor, which is the 1650, and search price low to high, right? I'm searching price low to high. It's looking like $220 if I wanna buy a new 1650. So if we compare it to what's actually available new right now, it is fairly compelling if you don't need that encoder and especially if you're on a build that will have a PCIe 4.0 connection because we did see it fall behind the 1650 uh, when it didn't have that connection. Now, overall, just as a GPU, I just don't recommend buying one this low end, and for the price, I don't think it's very good. 
Uh, I would love to have seen this be like a $100 or less GPU, to be, to be quite honest. I'm just saying that there are people specifically looking for the best GPU that doesn't require an external power connector. And, and that's the, the tiny niche where I think somebody might consider this. And you might rather have the 1650, honestly, but if it actually costs less right now, then, then maybe the 6400 makes sense. I don't know, are you guys interested in this at all? <laughs> Let me know in the comment section and I hope all of you have an excellent day.